I'm Corey. Welcome back to SJA Live. I'm Bill, and we're here with Ethan. Can you say hey? Hey. And John. How you doing, Bill? We're going to be talking about the water quality and the, the types of water in the estuary now, right? So um, I'm actually going to just hand this off to you and let you start. All right. Thank you, Bill. That's correct. Today we're going to be talking about how the water changes as you go from the headwaters of an estuarine system down into the oceanic portions. And so if we can zoom in on this map right here, this is a map of the Newport River, which is just upstream from us today. And as you can see up in this region, it's real narrow and small. And then as it comes toward the ocean, it widens out and then goes out toward the ocean right here at sea. And you can see these labels A, B, and C. What I've done is I've gone out and got water from A, B, and C. A is going to be our headwater location. B is our mid-estuary location. And C is kind of the uh, mouth of the estuary where it meets the ocean. And we're just going to talk about how the water is changing as we move down this gradient. So if Ethan would uh, grab this first one right here. This is water from A, which again is the headwaters. And Ethan, what does this look like? Anything in particular? Mm, kind of dark. Yeah, it's kind of dark. That's right. It's like iced tea, if you will. And what this is, is as the water comes off the land, it's passing over leaf litter, tree debris, and all sorts of things like that. And those dissolve chemicals in the water to make it this dark colored. And we call that tannic acid. And so that's why it has this coloration to it. You think this water is clean or dirty? Dirty. Ethan said dirty. Why do you think that? Why do you think that? Because it's not clear. Because it's not clear. That is a smart answer, but actually the coloration does not imply that it's dirty. Um, it's just like iced tea. Iced tea is dirty, but we still drink it. Now you wouldn't want to drink this because there's certainly other pollutants that could be in there, but the coloration does not imply dirty. So that's a key point to remember when you're thinking about estuaries. And so now we're going to grab water from the middle of the estuary. So this is from site location B. And as you can see, it's a little bit clearer than site A. And anybody, uh, Corey, you think you might know why it might be clearer? Um, it's probably clearer because it has more uh, salt water in it. That's correct. And, and more specifically, it's got more ocean water in it. So since B is right here in between A and C, it's kind of the mixing zone between the ocean water and the estuarine water. So that's why it's clearer. And as she said, it's got more salt water in it. So that's definitely true too. This water is a lot saltier than this water. The headwaters of Newport River have salinity less than one part per thousand. And when we get down to site B, you know, we've only moved a few miles here, but the salinity is probably up around nine to 10 parts per thousand. So that's a key point again with estuaries is, the salinity changes as you go downstream. In this uh, site B, we have a lot more oceanic species present. You could have spot, flounder, shrimp, things like that. And in site A, you're going to have more freshwater species, kind of like largemouth bass and brim and, and fish like that. So what do you think is going to happen when we pull up bottle from site C? Oh, it might be clear. It might be clear. Let's take a look. There's site seawater. And as Ethan told us, it's definitely a lot clearer. This looks a lot like ocean water. And that's because that's mostly what it is. Um, as you can see, as you move downstream, the water's getting clear. And so that means more light is penetrating and getting to the bottom, which is another key point for estuarine systems is the amount of light that can get through the water changes as you move from the headwaters down to the ocean. And that becomes important for things that are important like seagrass. Seagrass uh, in this area is growing down in this region here, but not in this region here. And the primary factor for that is the amount of clarity of the water. And it's really important in this region because it provides habitat for a lot of important commercial sp uh, species like clams and scallops and lots of nursery area for fish that we like to eat. So seagrass is a really important thing to have in your system. And so the, the more clarity you have, the more seagrass you can have. So another important thing about estuaries, we, we touched on it earlier, is the changes in salinity. 
and that has important implications for whether the water can mix well or not. And so we're going to do a demonstration to show you that salty water doesn't really want to mix with fresh water. And so we're going to have Ethan help me set this up and I'm going to let Bill hold the mic. We're going to let Ethan put some food coloring in water from site C. Alright, so we've got site C water colored red. Let's look back at that map just a second. You remember that A water is up on um, up near the headlands, a little a little fresher, and B's out out in our estuary and a little more saline. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some salty water in the bottom of this tank. And you'll notice there are some fishing lures in here to represent fish and other animals that might be in the estuary. And then we're going to put in some water from Site A and see what happens. What do you think is going to happen? Um, How about you, Corey? They're going to mix. It's looking a little bit darker right now, not so much red. Turn a little green, I think. <laughs> there we go. Now let's see what we have here. All right, that's pretty neat. If you look in there, what do you see, Ethan? A mixture of colors. Yeah, we've got a mixture of colors. We've got the red on the bottom, and we've got the green on the top. And what that's telling us is that the two different salinity waters do not want to mix. What do you think about that? Um, it looks like it's just what happens in the estuary, that it's the two different waters not mixing. That's exactly what happens. In an estuary, you have the fresh water coming from the upstream areas, kind of floating out on top of the more oceanic water. And what that means for fish is, if you like salty water, you're going to be in the bottom. And if you like fresh water, you might be in the top. And it also has important implications for whether the fish can get the oxygen they need. Because when this water gets this, it's called salinity stratification, then it can't get oxygen from the atmosphere. And what that means is, if you're living down here as these little fishies, if you get cut off from the atmosphere for too long, you'll use up all your oxygen and you might not be able to get enough to survive and you might have to just go on and have fish kill. We've all heard about those. And that's what happens in estuarine systems is you get this salinity stratification. The oxygen can't get down to the bottom water and the animals use up all the oxygen that's currently present. If they can't get out of the region, then they, they, they die. And so what do you think might uh, cause this stratification to break up and cause the water to mix? Any ideas, Corey? Um, well, if it was actually in the water, probably the tides or the wind. But if we mixed it up here, it probably would make it mix. Tides and wind are, are excellent answers. That's exactly right. If you have strong winds like we have today, then it can cause these waters to go ahead and mix. And since we can't simulate wind on this uh, aquarium, we're going to use a, a mechanical method and we're just going to shake it like this. And what did we find? It mixed a little bit. It mixed a little bit, that's right. But did it mix all the way, Ethan? No. No, it didn't. And what that tells us is that salinity stratification is really strong physical forcing that it takes a lot of energy to overcome. The only way to really get this to mix is to get a real strong wind or a real strong tide and then you can get it to mix just like that. 